Help support Name Explain by leaving a like and a comment, sharing this video, and by subscribing to the channel. Each sport seems to have its own glossary of words, terminology built up over the years that sport has been played. These terms can come from all kinds of origins, from obvious literal names to terms and concepts named after famous players of the sport. The terms I'm most interested in today, however, are ones found across a variety of sports, those being terms that derive from the names of birds. That might sound a little niche, and honestly, it is. When I had the idea to send this video around this concept, I expected to find more, but to my surprise, I could only find the ones I initially thought of when I had this idea and a couple extras. So while birds can't be found all across sports, there's some very well known or curious picks out there, like how Free Strikes in Bowling is named after the bird eaten by millions over Thanksgiving and Christmas, or the selection of bird names used in golf, or the one that started me down this rabbit hole, the waterfowl whose name is used when someone does a very bad job during a cricket match. It's kind of weird that birds are used for the names of these sporting features, so where did they come from? In fact, birds are used in more than just sporting terms. Many sports teams are directly named after birds. This is especially the case in American sports. This includes the likes of the Philadelphia Eagles, the St. Louis Cardinals, and the Seattle Seahawks, to name a few. There's all kinds of reasons as to why teams get named after birds. First off, naming teams after animals in general is pretty common. We have non-bird based names too, like the Chicago Bulls or Carolina Panthers. While some of these animal based names derive from historical times, most of the time, these animal based names derive from qualities those animals have that the team want to imitate, like having the strength of a bull or the speed of a panther. This is why you don't get teams named after more mundane animals, like we don't have the New York snails or the Chicago blobfish. This quality linking is especially the case with birds too. Birds have so many qualities that many sports teams want to imitate. They can fly with speed, have strength, and can be exceptional hunters. Who wouldn't want to be named after any of those things? There's one particular bird term that can be found in a multitude of sports, that being Hawkeye, sometimes also called Eagle Eye too. Hawkeye is a kind of technology that can see things the human eye simply cannot. It can track the movement of a ball and even predict its potential path. It's used in sports range from cricket to tennis to rugby to football and even hurling. It's become a mainstay of various sports in our age of technology. The name is of course Bird Theme 2. Hawks are renowned for their vision. They can see up to 100 feet away, which is around 8 times better than human vision. Suffice to say, hawks have pretty good eyes, hence why this technology is named after them. But that's all a bit of a ramble up to the terms I was talking about at the start of this video. Perhaps the strangest one of these terms is the one used in bowling. The best case scenario in bowling is hitting a strike, which knocks over all the pins. When you do this three times in a row, it is called a turkey. What has scoring three strikes in a row got to do with these bulbous birds? Well, apparently the term stems from bowling's past. Bowling is reportedly a pretty old sport, despite now being linked with neon signs and dubious animations. In around the 18th and 19th century, bowling competitions started to become more popular in the USA, and reportedly, as a prize for hitting three strikes in a row, a player would receive, well, an actual turkey. These days, most pros can hit three strikes in a row easily, so this might seem a tad easy. But in the past, this wasn't the case at all. Bowling, the lanes, the pins, and the ball itself were not as refined as they are now. So hitting three in a row was quite the challenge. As hitting a turkey became easier in modern times, other terms have sprouted up to celebrate even bigger achievements, such as a wild turkey hitting six strikes in a row, a golden turkey hitting nine strikes in a row, and for getting the perfect game hitting 12 straight strikes, you get the term of a dinosaur. This is because dinosaurs are non-existent today, much like the idea of a perfect game. And of course, luckily for us, dinosaurs are birds. Well, kind of. There is actually another bird based term in bowling which isn't as well known of as turkey, and it comes from another widely eaten bird, the term being chicken wing. A chicken wing in bowling is something of a dud throw, especially when your elbow pops out just as you swing, which results in a bad throw, maybe even a gutter ball. The reason it's called a chicken wing should be pretty obvious, as when you make this kind of fumbled bowling gesture, your popped out elbow looks something like a chicken's wing. One last kind of bird based bowling term is bird. 
dog, which is actually a kind of dog, I suppose. This is used to refer to a pin that slides across the lane to hit another pin over, much like how an actual bird dog hunts and retrieves birds for a hunter. This is also known as a messenger too. Bowling is seemingly full of interesting terminology and could probably have a full video unto itself one day. Though in regards to the sports with bird-based names, we have to talk about golf. Golf has a selection of bird terminology. In fact, just birdie unto itself is one of the more popular terms in golfing. To score a birdie in golf means to score one under par on a course. The term seems to have its roots in American slang. Apparently, bird was an American slang term that could be used for anything that was wonderful or excellent. Suffice to say, scoring one under par is pretty darn excellent. Where this initial term of bird, meaning excellent, comes from, we don't seem to be too sure. Birds have long been linked with things that are seen as good or nice. It might link with the term of bird used for an attractive person. What we do know, however, is when birdie in golf was first used. It's believed to have originated on a course at the Atlantic City Country Club in 1903. Apparently, on this course, a player named Abner Smith scored one under par and referred to it as a bird of a shot. He and his other players decided that anyone who won the game in this manner would get double the winning money. And from here, the term was shortened to just birdie and became linked with all golf. There's even a plaque on the course that highlights the creation of the term. Scoring one under par is pretty good, but do you know what's better? Scoring two under par. And for achieving this feat, Abner Smith decided that a more impressive kind of bird than just a generic birdie should be used as the name for this feat. This is why scoring two under par is called an eagle. Eagles are very mighty birds, and scoring two under par is a very mighty thing to do, hence why their name got applied to this score. But what about three under par? Well, apparently Abner Smith and his cronies dubbed this score a double eagle, which while bird-based, isn't too unique. A new bird name appeared for this score eventually, however, one that that was instead British in origin, that being the term of albatross. Albatrosses are seen as really magnificent birds, linked with their rarity and long lifespans. It was due to their rarity as to how their name got applied to this score, as scoring three under par is seen as being pretty rare. We have records of the term albatross being used in sports dating from the 1920s and 1930s. Finally, let's wrap things up with cricket. Now, cricket is full of interesting terminology too. In fact, the initial idea for this video was to solely focus on cricket before I went down this bird-based path. So apologies to anyone who wanted that video, maybe another time. Cricket's bird-based term is of course, duck, like the cute little water birds. During cricket, a duck isn't as cute. Like with golf, a duck refers to a kind of score, but not a good one. Scoring a duck in cricket means that a batter is dismissed with with scoring no runs at all during their time at the bat. I thought this term might have come from the term of a lame duck, meaning something that isn't very good, but that isn't the case at all. The term comes from the shape of the number zero, which is what's displayed when the batter scores no points. Zeros were seen as being a similar oval shape to a duck's egg, so the term of duck got applied to it. It could have been that this was initially called a duck egg, but was shortened to just duck over time. Calling it just an egg would have made a tad more sense. What's especially interesting Thing, however, are the kinds of ducks you can unfortunately score in a game of cricket. Just a duck means the batter scored no point, but you had an attempt. A golden duck, however, is when a batter gets dismissed during their very first attempt at batting. It gets better, however. Well, worse for the batter, I ought to say. You can also be out for a diamond duck. This is when a batter gets dismissed without even facing a legal bowl. And finally, we have the platinum duck, also known as a royal duck. This is when the batter is dismissed on the very first ball of the entire game. Pretty embarrassing, to say the least. There is one other kind of duck in cricket too, that being the Duckworth-Lewis method, also known as the Duckworth-Lewis-Stern method. This is a system in which the target scores are calculated in cricket for a team batting second after weather has affected the field. Cricket is a sport full of very specific rules, and this is one of them. This isn't of course named after a natural duck, but comes from one Frank Duckworth, a statistician who came up with the rule, along with someone called Tony Lewis. It's not entirely bird related, but I had to mention it, otherwise cricket cricket fans in the audience wouldn't forgive me. But that, I believe, is the majority of bird-based terms in sport. Like I said, there isn't a huge amount, but the fact there's this many is personally enough for me to dive into it. Like, none of these birds have anything to do with the actual playing of their respective sports. Like, we don't roll turkeys down the lane when bowling. Likewise, we don't try to get an actual albatross in a golf hole. And actual ducks don't play cricket. Yet the names of these birds have found their way into the lexicon of these sports one way or another. Suffice to say, 
this is all very much some foul play. Uh, sorry, I, I couldn't resist the pun. Uh, this video topic was suggested by Kent Dirk X over on my Patreon. Every Wednesday, I put up a video request post over on my Patreon for my awesome patrons to leave video ideas on. I then pick one of those ideas to be turned into a video the following Wednesday. So if you have a great idea for a name explain video and wish to enjoy name explain videos ad free as well as get exclusive content and your name at the end of these videos, then why not support the channel on Patreon? It takes just $1 a month to help the channel in a huge way and gets you all of these amazing benefits visit patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below Name Explain depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon, so a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explain videos, and your name at the end of the video with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash Name Explain or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All of that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.